Emma Edmonds, a spy during the Civil War, should be revered as the courageous and clever female spy she was. Born in New Brunswick, Canada, Emma had every right to stay out of one of the greatest tragedies in American history. Instead, she volunteered herself to the Union cause. Over several years, she risked her life countless times in order to gain intelligence on the Confederates and help the Union triumph. Born in December of 1841, Emma's birth name was Sarah Emma Edmonds. Emma's early life was far from peaceful. Her father was very cruel and had always wanted another boy, not a girl, so he despised Emma. When her mother died, her father became even more abusive. Finally, when she was 16, she put all her worldly possessions into a burlap sack and immigrated into Michigan. When the Civil War broke out, Emma knew she wanted to do something to ensure the Union's survival. Being a woman, there were plenty of things she could do to support the troops, like be a nurse in a hospital in Washington, D.C., or knit socks for the troops. But Emma didn't want to stay on the sidelines. She wanted to be a field nurse, but there was only one problem. Only men could be field nurses, so she decided to dress up as a man under the alias of Franklin Thompson. Drafted into the 2nd Regiment Michigan Volunteers, Army of the Potomac, Frank Thompson lived for months in the Army camp with complete confidence. Little did she know that her life would change drastically in the wake of two events. One of the events was the main spy for General McClellan was found guilty by the Confederates and was executed. The second was that an old friend and former love interest, Lieutenant Vesey, got shot in the back of the neck and was killed by a Confederate sniper. Alone these events were saddening and disheartening, but not life-changing. However, put them in a hectic sequence of events produced by war and you've got yourself a tragedy. When Emma heard this news, she was heartbroken and vengeful. In need of comfort of any kind, she turned to Mrs. Butler, the regimental chaplain's wife. Once she started talking, she poured out her entire story. What Mrs. Butler understood and never told a soul of Emma's secret. She also said that she and the chaplain would sponsor Emma as she set out to become a spy. Emma's first mission was to infiltrate the Confederate lines in Yorktown, Virginia, and bring back intelligence. The easiest disguise would be to piece together a Confederate uniform from the prisoners and go into cover as a Confederate soldier. But Wang Rong Regiment, Wang Rong commanding officer's name, and she was history. So, she came up with a different solution. It was a well-known fact that the South used a multitude of slaves to do the heavy lifting of making forts, hauling cannons, and other labor. So, using silver nitrate and a Wooly wig, Frank Thompson became Cuff the Contraband Slave. As Cuff, Emma gained valuable intel that some of their cannons were Quaker guns, large logs painted black to resemble a cannon. She also learned that a kind old peddler who was supposedly a strong Union sympathizer was actually a Confederate agent. With this knowledge and more, Cuff set out on his next challenge, trying to get out of the Confederate camp. Cuff and the other slaves were given an hour of freedom before being corralled into a large pen for the night. After the pen was closed, no slave could leave, and any slave caught trying to leave was shot as a deserter. Seeing no chance to escape, Cuff thought he would be stuck there forever. Fortunately, luck was on his side. One of the picket guards had recently died, and no replacement could be found for him, so Cuff was chosen for picket duty. Seeing this as a golden opportunity, Cuff stealthily crept his way back over to the Union camp, knowing that any sound he made would welcome a barrage of bullets. Back at camp, Emma shared this news with General McClellan, who, with this information, launched an attack on Yorktown, winning the city and getting the Army of the Potomac one step closer to taking Richmond. Emma's next mission was to find out more intelligence about the Confederate forces surrounding Richmond, Virginia. After puzzling over a proper disguise, Mrs. Butler came up with an idea. Tying pillows around Emma's waist for bulk, dressing her in fancy clothes, powdering her black hair to make it gray, giving Emma a wicker basket full of meager wares, and with the finishing touch of metal-rimmed eyeglasses, Mrs. Butler created Bridget O'Shea, a plump, matronly Irish immigrant who could easily slip through the Confederate lines. On her way to the Confederate lines, Bridget stumbled across an old barn. When she went inside, she found a sick Confederate soldier. The soldier asked her to give a gold watch to a Major McKean. Once at the Confederate lines, Bridget O'Shea told an officer that she must see Major McKean. When the two finally met, Major McKean asked O'Shea if she rode. When she said yes, she asked her to show a group of soldiers where the sick soldier was. They gave her a fine chestnut horse and told her to act as a lookout behind a bend in the road. 
Seeing the opportunity, Emma raced back to the Union camp on the horse, which she got to keep as a trophy. Emma's third mission was not to go undercover as a spy, but to be a detective in Louisville and try to find the main Confederate agent operating out of the bustling city, whose loyalties were divided just as much as the border state. Dressing up yet again as a man, Emma worked her magic, and within a week, Charles Mayberry had a toehold in Louisville society. As such, he was invited to a number of balls and galas. At one of these, he made the acquaintance of Mr. P. N. Aylesworth, who offered him a job as a clerk at his dry goods store. This was very advantageous for Emma, as she could pick up a lot of chatter from the customers. One man in particular, a Mr. Hall, was very suspicious, as he would come often to the store and spend hours with Aylesworth locked in his office. Could this be the agent Emma was supposed to nab? And if so, how would she do it? Finally, she, Emma got an idea. If it worked, it could shut down the whole Louisville Confederate spy ring. If it didn't, it would cost Charles Mayberry his life. The next day, Charles went into Aylesworth's office and told him that he planned to join the Confederate army and wondered if there was anything Aylesworth could do to help him. Yes, indeed, there was something Aylesworth could do to help the young man. As it happened, Aylesworth's good friend, Mr. Hall, had some important documents to deliver to the Confederates. So, Aylesworth told Charles to leave at his customary time, and then returned shortly before nine o'clock. After he left the shop, Charles told his contact what was happening, and was told there would be an ambush party of Union cavalrymen waiting for them on the road. Soon, Hall and Maryberry were apprehended by the Union cavalrymen. This bold and daring plan helped the Union nab Ellsworth and all the other Confederate spies. Though Emma didn't realize it, but this would be the last time she ever put on one of her disguises. Soon after, Emma got sick with malaria, known as swamp fever by the troops. The only option she had was to go to the hospital tent and get treated. But she knew very well she couldn't do that or her secret would be known. With no other option, Emma left the army for Carlyle, Illinois. While she was recovering, Emma learned that Franklin Thompson had went AWOL, absent without leave. In the Army's books, Franklin Thompson had been branded as a deserter. With any hope of returning to her place as a spy brutally destroyed, Emma made the best of the situation and took up being a female nurse in hospitals. Some years after the war, Emma married Linus Seeley, April 27, 1867, with whom she had three kids, all of which died before adulthood. Even after the war, Emma felt that she should get recognition for her services. So, with the help of a few old army friends, Emma petitioned to get a veteran's pension. July 5, 1884, Congress granted Emma a veteran's pension of $12 a month and an honorable discharge from the army, which meant she was no longer considered a deserter. Not only that, but Emma was the only female ever to be inducted and the only regular female member of the Grand Army of the Republic, an organization for Union veterans. Emma Edmonds died on September 5, 1898 of malaria, the same disease that caused her to abandon her spying career. She was buried with full military honors at Washington Cemetery in Houston, Texas. She was inducted into the Military Intelligence Corps Hall of Fame at Fort Huachaca, Arizona, in July 1988, 90 years after her death.